actually, uh, I was invited to give a lecture. And therefore, bilang isang professor, siguro ang lecture sa akin ay isang seryosong bagay. May PowerPoint presentation, the discussion theory. Pero sabi ko nga, mag-compromise tayo, mag-mentuhan tayo. Kasi every time I give a lecture, I always make sure that uh, ano mo naman ako dati ako, UP, pero ay nasa Lasal na ako. At sa Lasal, pero kami kasabihan, you have to teach minds. But you also have to touch hearts so that you can transform lives. And I couldn't do that if I just give you slides. Because I'm going to also tell you a story, a narrative. Uh, my topic, actually, The topic that was given to me is actually notions of nationalism and the implications of and on the Marcos narrative. So, medyo yung topic na nationalism, medyo napaka-theoretical nun eh. Kaya, ipagpapagod ninyo, kung yung mga unang slides ko, yung mga unang paksak is about Gloria. I teach political theory and Lazar. Actually, in fact, that's my area of specialization. And I always tell my students, I'm going to teach you the thoughts of dead white men. Political theory is actually a study of the ideas of dead white men. Because they're all men, mostly. They're mainly white and they're very dead. But my role as a teacher of political theory is to make theory alive. Paano mabuhayin para ma-appreciate? Kaya boring kasi hindi makarilig. Tama-tama to kasi yung paksa ko ngayon, paano natin bubuhayin ang teorya ng nasyonalismo sa naratibo sa laysay ng ating dating Pangulong sa dati ng Marcos? Anong implikasyon ng teorya ng nasyonalismo sa naratibo niya? At ano naman, kasi naginuwala ako sa dialectics eh. Ano man yung implikasyon ng naratibo niya sa teorya ng nasyonalismo? Una, what is nationalism? Alam mo, uh, sa teorya, nationalism is always considered as an ideology. Ano ba ang ideologiya? Ito yung mga kapulungan, yung mga karunungan na ginagamit natin para bigyan ng atwiran ang isang bagay. An ideology is the compendium of beliefs, worldviews that we use to justify a particular action. Kaya nga mayroong counter-ideology kasi na naman yung justification na ginagamit natin to act against an established system. Saan naman ang definition ng nationalism? It is defined as loyalty and devotion to nation, especially manifested in a sense of national consciousness o kamalayang pambansa and by exalting one nation above all others and placing primary emphasis on promotion of its culture and interest as opposed to those of other nations and supranational groups. Now, lagi natin inisip nationalism is an exalted ideology. It is something that is positive, but let me tell you this. I'm not going to love you to, to say that nationalism is always positive. Because mayroong negative implication ang nationalism. While nationalism is a fundamental element in the process of state building, it has been shown that extreme and intense forms of nationalism could become one of the causes of political violence, such as genocide, civil war, and interstate wars. Nationalism could have given birth to Israel as a nation yung kanilang Zionist movement. But it is also the kind of nationalism, there is a kind of nationalism that also gave birth to what engendered the birth of Israel, and that is Nazism. Hitler is a nationalist. Genocidal episodes in history have been caused by extreme forms of nationalism. So nationalism has two sides. It is both positive and negative. Now, ang isang dapat lagi natin iisipin, ang nasyonalismo ay isang ideologiyang nakauga sa kultura pagkatao o kakuhan kung tawarin namin. So, culture and identity. 
So a nation is generally a group of people usually occupying a specific territory and sharing a common language, religion, historical tradition, and customs and habits. Any political science freshman would know this. Okay? Pag hindi nyo alam ito, dapat binabagsak kayo ng teacher nyo kung gano'ng polisa. But oftentimes, a nation is firmly rooted in a particular ethnicity. Okay? Now, ito lagi itong mahuhul view sa so, talagang naman ito ni Claire. A nation is different from a state. Because the state acquires the attribute of political sovereignty both externally and internally. A state is different because it acquires political status. Okay. So a state is recognized as independent and autonomous distinct from other states. In political science, we call this as external sovereignty. Even as it is also recognized as having a legitimate formal authority to govern over its citizen subjects, which we call in political science as internal sovereignty. Now, what is a nation state? A nation state emerges when a single national identity is the ground from where a state is born. That there is a nation, and that on that nation, a state is born. But not all states are nation states. And not all nations end up contained in a single state. Balikan natin ang nasyon. Grupo ng mga tao magkakatulad ng kasaysayan, magkakatulad ng kultura, magkakatulad ng kalamasan, maaari na katira sa isang, not necessary ha, pero maaari na katira sa isang teritoryo, yun ang nasyon. Lagyan mo yung suverenya at kasarilan, nation state yun. Pero hindi lahat ng nation, hindi lahat ng state may isang nasyon at hindi isang nasyon nagiging isa lang ng state. In fact, there are states that have many nations. The United States, for example, has fully recognized the presence of Native American nations within its territory. It is also possible that what can be considered as a nation finds itself located in two different states, as in the case of the Kurds. The Kurdish nation, some of them are found in Turkey and some of them are found in Iraq. So this leads to certain tensions and dysfunctionalities. An ethnic group, okay, when they want to be recognized as a nation, could lead to a politically contentious issue. Kunyari, meron kang isang nasyon, meron kang isang state, pero yung nasyon na yun, hindi yun yung kabuuan ng estado, may iba pang mga kulturang grupo. Pero itong ethnic group, kunyari, may ethnic group tayo, kapag yung isang ethnic group nag-assert na may isang nasyon, maaaring maging problema yun. Bakit? Post-war states have been involved in state-building projects. Gusto nila mag-build ng state that generally promote unity and harmony. And any attempt by an ethnic group to demand recognition as a nation disrupts that narrative. Let me give an example, the case of the Rohingyas in Myanmar. The Rohingyas are demanding to be considered, there's the right to determine self-determination, are they demanding that, then they are now, that's now a problem for Myanmar. And this would even lead to civil war and genocide. So an ethnic minority that visibly asserts its sense of nationhood becomes a threat to the dominant state project and in many instances, this has led to civil war and even genocide. Just like what's happening now in Myanmar. Now it is the case of the Philippines. The Philippines, with its multi-character, appears to be in a situation where the issue of ethnicity and national needs to be addressed. Of course, you will have to ask yourselves, and I'm going to ask you, is the Philippines a nation state? Now, the case of Mindanao, for example, and the Bangsamoro, reveals to us that we are, at the very least, not a nation state, but a state with at least two nations. Okay? So, 
Why we may not have reached the point where every single ethnic group demands to be recognized as a nation, our indigenous peoples, the Igorots, Mangyans, Itas, and Lumans, among many others, have, have articulated such self-identification. They might not demand right now some sense of self-determination, but technically, they fit the definition of a nation. In fact, the banks are all right now as soon as you reach that point. So what are the institutional responses? The 1987 Constitution and the 1972 Constitution during the times of President Marcos has already talked about regional autonomy in the Cordillera, and in Mindanao as a constitutional response to this demand. And in fact, a law has already been passed, the Republic Act 8371, or the Indigenous Peoples Rights Act of 1997, which tacitly affirms the rights of indigenous peoples to be technically recognized as nations since the full sovereignty that only a nation state can possess. So, in this opinion, the Philippines have a time policy framework. Yung ARMM at saka yung IPRA. Na kung saan nakikilala na natin na may karanas, karapatan ng mga katutubo na kilala ng bilang mga nasyon. Although we don't call them as nations. Now, at this point, like without Boyo, <laughs> actually I'm going to try as much as possible not to Boyo. I'm going to try to do this as lightly as possible, but as I almost did now with this group. Ano may mga teorya ng nationalism? May dalawang teorya, may dalawang pamilya ng teorya. Yung una yung tinatawag namin na primordial theories at yung tinatawag namin na social constructivist theories. Ang ano ba ng primordial constructs? Ito yung mga teorya na niniwala na meron primordial nation. Bago pa nagkaroon ng estado, meron ng nasyon. Okay? This is a view held by the Germans. The German nationalist schools, Gottlieb Fitch, at saka si Juan Gottfried Herder. Ano ba ang main na pananaw nitong teorya na to? They believe in the existence of a nation that preceded the state and that states emerged firmly founded on the existence of these nations. That nations preceded the state. Okay. So for the primordial theories, nationalism therefore becomes an ideology that renders the force that cements the process of state building. Kasi meron lang nasyon, meron lang kamalayan. So ito yung nagtulak para matayo ang estado. And usually, the nation state is the outcome of this. Alam naman mga German, ang mga German medyo may pagkali yan. Okay? Very precise, rigid ang kanilang teorya. Ngayon, meron niyang uh, yung kabila, yung tinatawag namin na social constructivism. The social constructivists believe that the development of states from nations and the role of national nationalism in it may not necessarily be in a neat, linear fashion which the primordial theories would like to image it. Basta kanila hindi necessarily na nauna yung nasyon bago yung state. Pwede yung mauna yung state in the greater nation. O mauna yung state magkakaroon na lang ng pag-create na ng myth na nasyon. So yun ba mga jurista dito? Meron akong apat na i-discuss sa ito very briefly sa Benedict Anderson si Ernest Gerner, at meron isang time, si Tong Chai Queen at Chakul, at saka si Eric Hobsbawm. Ngarit ang bakit ko ng Pilipino dyan. May sagot ako dyan, mamaya. Bakit? Ano sila ni Benedict Anderson? Si Benedict Anderson, siya yung foremost advocate of the social constructivist theory of nationalism. He posited that nations are imagined communities. Ito'y in-imagine lang in the sense that people may not have a full commonality but nevertheless adhere to the ideas and representations of such commonality. In short, a nation is not necessarily an empirical reality. It is a construct in the minds of people. It can be imagined. Okay? So for Anderson, a nation is simply a fabrication, a bond 
between people that did not exist prior to its recognition by the people who imagined it as such. So, pwede magkaroon muna ng Estado, tapos mag-imagine na lang tayo ng nasyon to be the, the ideology that will help us build that state. Now, Sir Ernest Gellner, similar lang sinabi niya, he believes that nations are artificial constructs whose sustainability depends on the support of the elites. Bakit importante si Gellner? Kasi importante kay Gellner ang role ng elites sa national building, sa nationalist projects. Gellner argues that it is the recognition by people of their being part of a nation that establishes and not the possession of shared commonalities that distinguishes them from other groups. Bakit ito importante? Unahan ko na kayo. Di ba lagi sa ating nasabi sa Pilipinas, ang dami pang ethnic groups. May Lokano, may Bicolano. Di ba? Meron Ilocano food, may Bicolano food, may Tagalog. Di ba? In fact, doon tayo may hati-hati. Okay? So, ibig sabihin na para kami natin nasyo. Pero, we are all Filipino. So, we can imagine that being a Filipino. We can build that being a Filipino. There is no primordial Filipino nation but it can be now imagined as an outcome of our state building process. And Gellner entertains that thought. He posits that nationalism is simply an act of strengthening the fabrication of such recognition and considers this as necessary mechanism to face the challenges of modernity. Okay? Ito naman si Tong Chai Mimi Chako. Ito ay isang Thai geographer na ang kanyang simula ay Saya Ma. Kaya importante sa mga nationalist scholars ang teorya ng Minitsha ko kasi nag-address sa social constructiveness of the idea of a nation pero importante sa kanyang teritoryo. In addition, he gives attention to the role of physical space or what he labels as its due body by looking at the nation in the context of its finite territory and its borders. Okay? In espousing this view, Tong Chai considered that the physicality of space becomes a factor that directs the development of nationalism and of national identity. Importante yung meron tayong teritoryo yung pinag-uusapan. Importante dito sa Pilipinas kasi may pagbabanda. Meron isang maging bansa kung sa ating north-western part na gustong lamunin ang ating teritoryo sa West Philippine Sea. So importante din yan kung sa Pilipinas. And finally, we have Eric Fox Bong. So, Eric Fox Bong, kakaiba ito kasi ito, medyo Marxista ito. Ano naman natin mga Marxista associated sa komunista, medyo radical. He is critical of the primordial notions of the nation. But, he also said that may problema. He has still painted mythology ng an idealist notion of the nation. He considers a view that looks at nations as natural, God ordained in Eric and his name as a myth. Instead, what he posits as real is the manner by which nationalism has either obliterated existing cultures or if not has invented nations. Alam mo si Herr Korsbom, ito ang isa sa mga critical na sinabi niya. The process of nation building, if not, we are not careful it may turn into a process of nation destroying. In our desire to build a Filipino nation, we may end up, if we're not careful, obliterating our differences as regional groups. Yun ang kanyang nag-warning siya. Yung pagnanais natin na magkaroon tayo ng pag-isa ng pagkatao, ako ha, baka yung pag-iba-iba natin na mahalaga sa atin. Mahalaga sa inyong pag-iba, mahalaga sa inyong ding-ding. Ako bigulano, mahalaga sa akin ang laing. Then, pero pag impose sa atin na may national dish, mas national language, then it could end to destroying also the cultures of people. That is what I find as important in Hobbes Bond's view. So, Hobbes Bond has succinctly image nationalism as a project that is not organic, is socially constructed, and can even lead to the destruction of cultures and that they only exist in the context of political, social, and economic development. Okay. Now, siyempre, punta na tayo dito kasi apply natin sa Pilipinas tapos mamaya natin i-apply sa narrativo ni Ferdinand Marcos. This debate between the primordial theorists 
And the social constructivist gains primary importance when it comes to the case of the Philippines. And here, one can easily conclude that primordial theory loses its potency in the face of the fact that the Philippines is empirically a colonial construction. What do I mean by that? Before the coming of the Spaniards, we didn't have a Philippine nation. What gave us the stage and the impetus to imagine a nation was the colonial experience. Prior to the coming of the colonizers, there is no primordial nation which every Filipino can associate with. So it is in this context that dadagdagan ko isa pang teorya. Yung tinatawag namin sa post-colonial teorya at yung pinakapaborito ko dito si Franz Caron. Now, post-colonial theory and ethnicity and national identity, such as that espoused by Franz Fanon, speaks of nationalism as a process of retaking the process of writing the national narrative from the colonial masters. Kasi si Fanon, ang inisip niya, may mga bansa katulad ng Pilipinas o mga katulad ng nasa Africa, ng Algeria, kunyari, na kinulungisa ng Europeo, ng Europeo kaya ng Amerikano. At ang nagtatag ng ating kabansaan ay ang ating pagiging kolonos ni Colonia. Ano gagawin nyo doon? Hindi yan tinake up ni Hobsbawm, hindi yan tinake up ng mga primordial, hindi yan tinake up ni Gilmer o ni Anderson. Kaya tingnan natin ano ang ating gagawin kung ang karanasan natin, ang pag-aayun natin, ang pag-imagine natin ng kabansaan ay may bakas ng kolonisasyon. Okay? Fanon's important contribution to the struggle against colonialism is his concern in history. And this is very important because I own a na kayo of all the presidents that we have, post-World War II presidents. It is only Ferdinand and Luis Marcos who was conscious of that, about the role of history. So Fanon argues that this involves the act of claiming back of their own history by colonizers. Alam mo, eto, ewan ko kung narinig nito. Bakit ba history ang tawag sa history? Anyone? Kasi ito yung mga saraysay na sinulat ng mga kalalakihan. His story. Hindi her stories. Because history is a story written by those who want Ilan ba tayong libo dito na nandito sa bulwagan ito? May nangyari sa labas. Lahat tayo bibigyan ng pagkakataong magsulat ng nangyari sa labas. Maniwala kayo sa hindi. At least 1,000 narratives ang labas. Now, ang history ay ang mga nasulat ayon sa pananaw ng mga nagwalin. History is always written from the perspectives of those who want. And if you are colonized, The colonial masters and their collaborators among us were the ones who were allowed to write and explain. So Franz Fanon is saying that important to the process of nation building is also the process of taking back the process of writing. Of the stories that we tell and the stories that tell us. He stresses the importance of culture and representation of the past to the creation of both new past forms of subject formation and new forms of social organization. Importante ang paggamit ng kultura, paano ba natin ito sa sanarawan, ano mga mitolohi ang titignan natin at gagamitin. So the main strategy as far as may panon is to reclaim and reconstruct and reconstruct history and culture as the basis for the new post-colonial forms of nation and national identity. Para sa kanya, kasi nabahira ng western lens, western gaze, ang ating kasaysayan. Parte ng nation building ay i-reclaim yun at i-reconstruct ayon sa ating panalaw bilang mga malayang mga Pilipino. He proposed that colonized societies must develop new forms of social democracy instead of simply utilizing existing colonial institutions and feminine existing positions of people. Kailangan pag-uhinan ang diwa. 
hindi na lang yung okay, hindi malaya na tayo, pero yung gobyerno na sistema, lalagay tayo mga Pilipino, okay na yun. Hindi. Kasi yung diwa, yung logic mismo, ng systems of governance, might be already structurally impeded by the colonial biases. He also placed a strong emphasis on the role of education. Importante ito. Lalo na lang sa LMSU tayo. He was aware that many intellectuals in the post-colonial period are products of colonial modes of education which are based on the theories and beliefs of the colonizers. Yes. Yung colonial mentality na sinasabi. So a deliberate effort must be made not to reproduce the concepts and beliefs of the colonizers during the period of post-colonial period. Tayo mga nag-aaral, dapat malinaw sa atin yung mga karunungan ating inaaral. Karamihan dito ay galing sa kanduran. May mga assumptions ito na maaaring hindi nagtutok sa Pilipino. So, anong mahirap, alam mo, anong mahirap na nangyayari sa Pilipinas? Actually, a consciousness of primordial notion can make the world a post-colonial rebuilding is here. Kung meron sana tayong bagay na, alam mo, madali sana mag-rebuild ng nasira ng colonization. Kung bago naman yung mga Pastila, meron tayong Majapahit Empire. Meron tayong isang kultura. Tingnan mo ang Indonesia. Kung may isang mga Dutch. Pero kung may isang mga Dutch, hindi na ka-problema. Kasi bago pa tumating mga Dutch, meron silang grand narrative. Tayo kasi wala. Nationalism in this context and sa masaming bargaining projects of just recovering the pre-colonial grand narratives. What makes this complicated in the case of the Philippines is the absence of a pre-colonial grand national narrative which can be the object of every project of recovery. We could no longer recover. How can you recover if you forgot and that you forget that you forgot? What is there to recover if there is no goal? Diba? So many will argue that the Philippine Revolution, which was waged against the Spaniards, but was interrupted by the American occupation, was the beginning of the crafting of a grand narrative for the Philippine nation. Our revolutionary leaders made that effort to craft and begin a Filipino narrative. And, then, and here there is this contestation, like we have this debate about is Jose Rizal a national hero? Is Jose Rizal a nationalist? Or is he is Bonifacio more a nationalist? Why? Because some people argue that Rizal is just reproducing the colonial narrative. He wrote in Spanish. But on the other hand, people say that Rizal was a symbol of a reconstruction. He began the idea of independence in a way. So, yan ang debate, and I'm not going to go into that anymore because this is not a lecture about this thing. So, there are consequences and implications. So this leads some scholars to argue that nation building in the Philippines remains a contentious and ongoing process while the process of nation building is done simultaneously with the process of state building. Primordial nations are built already just with the state. In our case, we are doing both at the same time. We are building states at the same time we are building the nation. And our therefore task is more difficult. This explains why until now the issue of a national language remains highly contested. With regional regional ethnic languages asserted against the celebration of a Tagalog centric national language. Diba? At isip tayo, sa ibang mga bansa, central na yan, ibang national language nila. Pero sa atin, diba? Meron pagkatalo. Although nakalagay sa ating salitong batas na ang national language ay Filipino, pero yung Filipino, kaya nang pag-i-develop, masaya nang mag-i-develop. There has to be, it has to be developed. Okay? So even the Constitution talks about Filipino as a language that appears to be still subject to negotiations and development. To accommodate regional voices. Alam ito ng, you know, sa mga nagtuturo na, kasi nung pangulo si Pangulo Agueta ng UP, sa UP pa ako nagtuturo nun, nabigay siya ng incentive. Ang incentive niya ay binigay sa amin, pag magturo ka sa wikin Pilipino, imumultiply lang ito ang yung units. Kung ito yung units na binuturo mo, this is units na. Kaya nang declare yan, di siyempre eh. Maganda yan, kasi ganun mga subject ang tuturo, ito yung units ka na. Diba? Di siyempre, napipilitan kami na mag-Filipino. Pero, in-encourage kami na mag-gumamit ng mga words mula sa ibang regional languages. Kaya kanyari, kami sa political science, 
ang words sa hegemony ay naging, kasi wala, hindi pwede mo pangyarihan kasi ito wala nakapangyarihan, power. So we have to appropriate a word from Isaiah. Gahum. So we use gahum as a equivalent of hegemony. So, may effort na kumuha. So hindi ko alam kung active ang Ilocano in trying to contribute to the development of the Philippine language. Ano yung pwede i-contribute ng Ilocano language to the Philippine language? But what is the point there is that hindi ba nabibig tayo ng akala natin big na yung nation natin eh patuloy pa rin natin yung negosyate yung ating national language. Hindi pa buo. So, eto naman ngayon ang isang importante. At the other side of the debate is the fact that a key observer will notice the absence of a palpable institutionalization of ethnicity as a basis for official identity. <coughs> Sabi natin, tayo ng mga ethnic divides, regional differences tayo, di ba? Bipukano, Bipulano, Abampangan, Pangasinan, ang asawa ng Tagapangasinan, pero Panggalato, hindi po, hindi Lokano. You know? Pero ito ni City. Sa ibang bansa, katulad ng Amerika, every time you file a form, you have, you have to identify and check what is your ethnicity. Asian, Latino, African, whatever. E sa Hawaii nga, pag nandun ako nag-aaral, nandun ako PhD, meron ito, Filipino, America, Japanese, Hawaiian, Portuguese, Japanese, Filipino. Parang may tumukated na identities. Sa atin, isipin nyo, sa mga forms na pinipil out tayo, driver's license, passport, enrollment sa MMSU application, meron pang box na tinitik about your ethnicity. None. In fact, I did the research na kailangan ko malaman ilan ang kilukaro, ilan ang bisaya na ka-enroll sa kasal. Wala sa database. You just have to assume where sila pinanganak. Pero hindi totoo yun kasi hindi po kaya pinanganak ka sa kilukaro, kilukaro na rin yung tatay mo. Right? pwedeng mga Tagalog sila na dito lang nagtrabaho sa Lobo at sa Lobo. In which case, ang kanilang i-physical Tagalog pa rin. Kasi may blood dyan. Okay? So, doon mo mapapaisip. Oo nga naman ano, meron tayong mga ethnic divides pero wala tayong consciousness ng ating mga ethnic divides. So, unlike other countries, even like the US, where one has to declare one's ethnic roles, our official papers from applications for a passport to application for a job do not have a space in which we're asked to declare our ethnic identities. Ito, magandang opportunity ko. It is in this complicated terrain that we find ourselves located. We are at the same time regionalist, but also lacking institutionalized ethnic identities. It is in this regard that the social constructivist students of nations and nationalism appear to be the ones that are more applicable to all sides. That nation building of the Philippines can be imagined. Okay. There is an opening for that. We can imagine and we can construct our being of Philippines. <clears throat> we do not have a primordial nation that can be our template. What we have instead are a social construct and representation of our national identity, which at best remains contested, but also offers us the opportunity to be more innovative and inclusive in our imagination of what binds us together as a state of many nations. In the end, it is now even possible to talk about nationalism and not just nationalism in the same way. Importante ito, lalo na na gusto natin pumunta sa federal system of government. Now, sec second to the last body of topics na ito. Hindi lang naman tayo umasa sa Western theories. So one of the strategies in which a sense of national identity can be nurtured in the context of a post-colonial setting like ours, as Franz Manon has pointed out, is to alter the manner by which knowledge about ourselves is constructed and told. And here, Filipino academics have generated three strong traditions of indigenizing the study of culture, history, and psychology. Meron tayong tinatawag na Filipinolohiya, meron tayong pantayang pananaw, at meron tayong sigurohiyang Pilipino. Pasadahan ko na ito very briefly in this slide. 
Ano yung Philippine Luhia? Social anthropologists, most of them which is Costa Rica, have talked about Philippine Luhia where the study of Filipino culture is done on our own lens, using our own context and languages, and not from the perspectives of the Western disciplines. And then meron tayong pantayo para na, o si Alet, alam niya to, sa history. Si Alet Hernando, di ko lang ang pag-apagay, alam niya na yung kasama ko na dati sa UPMB. Ang pantayong pananaw, ang namuno nito si Siyo Salazar. He has offered approach in historiography, which they call as pantayong pananaw, which similarly looks at our own experiences, narratives and languages, as the context in which we write and tell our history. Kalimutan lang natin yung mga paano tayo isinulat ng katulangan. Isipin natin, paano natin isusulat ang ating kasaysayan? In fact, para sa kanya, ano ba yung kasaysayan? These are salaysays na mga isaysay. These are narratives that are meaning. Because narratives that do not mean to us is not history. This is in contrast to the elite narratives that have been propagated by Filipino scholars who born in print of the colonial discourse. And finally, we have the psychology of Filipino, SP. We have psychologists who followed the video and make these initiatives to celebrate psychology of Filipino as an approach to correct the misrepresentations of Western psychology to characterize our behavior as a people. Marami tayong mga pangungkali na dismiss ng mga kalimrani na negative, katulad ng bahala ng mentality. Bahala na. Akala ng mga kalimrani, negative, ano yan, napaka-defeatist nyo naman, napaka-fatalist. Pero sa akin mga SP, ang bahala na, sign of courage. Diba? Pag sinabi natin, kahit ang lalaki ng mga kalaman natin sa basketball, bahala na, kakaya natin na yan. O, defeatism na yan. Bahala na is not fatalism. Bahala na is courage. So, you twist to way to interpret metaphors. These are those reverses Western psychologists as options and give privilege to indigenous constructs and methods of study. And the concept that emerges as the core construct is our notion of a shared self. Important ito. Or what is labeled as capo which becomes the factor that enables us to act in relation to other Filipinos. Gusto kong bigyan ng emphasis ng kapwa kasi ito importante sa national national project. The idea of kapwa is perhaps the strongest explanatory variable that we can use to serve as a linchpin to our sense of nationalism. It is a metaphor that has the power to transcend our differences as we build our sense of a nation as a collection of unique and distinct ethnic groups. This is because kapwa is a principal driver that enables us to act towards people who are not just like us, but even to other people who are different from us. Meron tayong pakikipagkapwa, at ang pakikipagkapwa, hindi lang natin ginagawa sa mga taong katulad natin. Mas lumilito pa nga ito pag ang pinakarap natin ng ibang tao. Pakikipagkapwa, is even seen at its brightest when we have been able to give it care towards people who are different. And it can be linked to political order. Alam niyo, so Western ontology, alam niyo ontology, ontology, technical term, ontology is a philosophy, it's studies about being and identity. So Western ontology, merong self, merong other. Pero so Western ontology, the self is above the other. The other is the and fear you, the one that you avoid, the one that you fear. Pero sa Pilipino ng Tuluhiya, ang kapwa makes us look at ibang tao na parang hindi na. Okay? We do not have a hierarchical ontology. This is precise and the foundation that we can tap to cement a Filipino national identity that is called the son of the multiple ethnicities that are found within our territorial imagination. Eh, Kila, ako kasi, isa sa mga naging ambisyon ko, at aamihin ko na ito kay Kila, ang ambisyon ko, gusto ko mag-iwan ng Igasiya sa political science, sa katulad ni Berlino Ingrigues na si Yusa Lazar at ni Popin Gubar. Ano ba yun? Magtayo ako ng isang tradisyon na pag-aaral ng politika na makapilipino o pilipinong politika. So, naghanap ako ng isang ebidensya ng pagkikipagkapwa natin 
kung paano natin itayo ang order. Kasi, you know, political theory, eh, politics is just about establishing order, hindi ba ito eh? Okay? How do you harness power to establish order? One template is to use the state. I argue that it is not the state that we have to strengthen to build kapo. It is our sense of nation and community. Let me give an example. Sino ba dito sa inyo mga nagda-drive? Ako nagda-drive ako. Pag nagda-drive tayo, ano bang tinuunan natin? Ang traffic rules o ang behavior ng driver? Ay lang. Nung sa hawaya ako, nagtumira, apat na beses ako nag-take ng driver's test at ako'y bumagsak. Kasi, pag ako nag-road test, pag ako mag-shift ng tingin, ako lumilingon. Eh, tools pala yung importante, lumilingon ka para may, may yung, yung line spot mo, makita mo. Eh, tayo dito, di ba tayo lumilingon, tinitingan tayo ka na. Kasi pag dito, lingon ka na, lingon mo, kumungunga. Bakit? Ganon. Kasi hindi na natin kinukonsider ang line spot natin because the people behind us takes care of it. Ano ba nangyayari kapag nag-break down ang traffic? Sinasabi natin, hindi kasi nagbibigay yan. May mga swapan. Break down ang traffic is not because we don't follow traffic rules. It's because we don't follow the norms of the community. So that is an empirical evidence of how we build orders in communities and nations on the basis of our social capital. Not because of those. This is what made us act as one in the face of political crisis and natural economics. Example, Baguio. Naundoy tayo, nag-Yolanda. Naparalisan ang gobyerno for a while. Hindi naka-up. Baka sa pinahal din sila eh. Sino kinasahan mga tao ng tulungan? Pamayan na. Kapitbahan. Miss Lim si Anderson Cooper, isang senior host, was so impressed at how can manage to rise up with a smile, even in times of crisis. We are so resilient. We rely on a sense of kapwa. Ito na lang, huli ko yung example. Have, have you ever asked why there is no serial killer in the Philippines? Di ba yung serial killer? Ito yung pag-araw ay librarian, nagtatrabaho, hindi makabali ng kamote. Pero pagkabi, monster, pumapatay ng mga babae, mga nakapula ng mga babo. Diba? Bakit ko nagkano sa Pilipinas? Wala tayong sikil. Meron tayong masakar. Or sikil. Pero wala tayong sikil. Why? Kasi ganitong paniwala ko dyan. Teorya ko ito eh. Allow me. Madali ka mahuli. Why? Unang-una wala kang physical space sa pagtataguan ng bangkay. Kasi puro na maya eh. Pangalawa, wala kang social space. Pagchichismisan ka. Kasi, ang sabi, mare, nakita mo si ganito kagabi. Uwi, gabi-gabi na naman. Yung tumukan yung pagtagal niya. Pag-uusapan ka, laging mahuhuli ka. Kasi we make it our business na makialam sa mga kapitan. We consider that as pakialaman. Pero that is a culture of together na that makes us all. Malakas ang ating kapwa. We use kapwa as the foundation for our build political communities. So ito na tayo sa aking pinaka-main message. What is the implications of this on the Marcos narrative and the implications of the Marcos narrative on this. I would like to say this, and dito dahil nagpapalakal ng papel kay Madam Governor. Matagal ko na itong ina-argue, kaya nga alam, kaya nga ang binabash ko ng kasama ko sa akademya, dahil ako daw ay loyo ni Scott. I would like to say this with a straight face, Ferdinand E. Marcos is one of the most intellectual president that our country ever had. And therefore, for me, it is a healthy exercise to mine these ideas of those gems that we can use as we face the difficult task of national state. In fact, Marcos presided over the most difficult era of post-World War II history. Any president of lesser intellectual moving would have simply addressed those challenges with the usual transactional approaches of the new country devoid of any original ideological anchor or of any view that would have disrupted the ordinary of the news one. Hindi transactional sa kanil ng Marcos. He is ideological and philosophical. He is intellectual. 
Yun ang mga presidente, transaksyon na natin nila dyan. President, in there, with all due respect, is not intellectual. He's very transactional. I'm not saying that that's bad, but I'm just saying that you check. This declaration of martial law, while demonized by men, is certainly a watershed that has provided the opportunity for him to offer a radically different scenario for the process of building our nation. Because Marcos's political narrative is not just about governance. It was about the construction of a national identity. Imagine the nation, knowing the fact that we have to build it. This was not just about the hardware of political work, but also the software, the symbolic representations. Hindi lang hardware importantes na yan. Transaction na yan, yung software. His bagong lipunan. His investments in infrastructure that oftentimes carry local architecture. Mamamay, i-discuss guro ng ating kasama ng Sarawal Sunico. And his cultivation of the arts are all deliberate attempts to help the development of a grand narrative. While at the same time, all of the Philippines are respectable place in the community of states, which I think what Claire is going to talk about. While Marcos may not have articulated his recognition of the plurality of our ethnic identities, he nevertheless established the foundation for regional autonomy, particularly in Mindanao. In fact, he also established the foundations for regional governance. Prior to Ferdinand Marcos, wala pa yung mga regional centers na yan, provincia. But he was the one who started talking about regions as units of government. This was not a project to homogenize, but to strengthen the project of building our grand plan. So what is now our challenge? It is now our challenge to pick up the pieces from these initiatives and try to harness our sense of kapwa in order for us to socially construct a Filipino state that celebrates our diversity as a You know, I, I was so touched by the opening statement of the governor because it was a challenge that is given to us. Uh, we know for a fact that the Marcos Serenium has been demonized. Any attempt to give it a different spin is accused as being revisionist. As if history is not about revising. Yet the important point that I think should be in the minds of everyone is this. It's about time that we have to make the ideas of President Marcos alive for concrete activities, nation-building activities, governance initiatives, because he has a lot to offer. In this battle between a demonized Marcos and a saintly other side, and we're going to name it that side, I think mas malaman ang ino-offer ng salaysay ng Marcos kasi meron nga siya ng pagiging intelektual. May pilosofiya siya, may ango siya. Hindi lang ambisyon. So I think that is something that should be a full for thought for everyone. Let us just harness the gems of his ideology, his philosophy, to build a nation from concrete manifestations of forms of governance, initiatives. And to the end, the narrative will change. Okay. So, I would like to end. Thank you.